NFL rookies are heading to training camp this week. Who's under the most pressure? What are the expectations for Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, and Drake May? We're going to discuss all of this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a senior draft analyst. And thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everyday. As you know, I got to kick the intro to Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. Can you talk to him, baby? What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 National Champ, man, and what the other side to this dynamic duel that we like to call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I want to start this podcast off by saying shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day, man. If you can hear my voice, go ahead, hit that like button. Don't forget to comment and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel at Locked On NFL Draft. Today's show, like I said, man, is action-packed. We are getting ready for training camp dp so you know what that means these rookie quarterbacks they are going under the spotlight yes we are putting that big light on them man so we're gonna talk about the fast start for caleb williams and Jaden daniels the expectations for bo nicks who will probably be the starter dp for the denver broncos and then drake may how much time does he have in new england to be able to get that ship righted up there in boston dp before we get started man why don't you hit him with our title star sponsor Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Keith, let's start with let's start with Caleb Williams. I yep. think Caleb Williams needs to have a fast start to training camp, and the reason it's two reasons why. Number one, I think we kind of the, the elephant in the room that typically happens during draft season is the pre-draft process, right? generational tag people say he was better a better prospect than trevor lawrence who won the natty right all the stuff that we heard about caleb and everything we saw from him i think that's a part of it people going to expect him to be the guy we saw at usc houdini that that superstar type caliber player but my second reason for it i and and remember last year i kind of i kind of called my shot with the houston Texans. i didn't call playoffs but i said I think they're going to be a lot better than people give them credit for. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they were going to be drafting first overall. When I look at this Chicago Bears team, I think that this is a playoff caliber team. I think this is a playoff caliber roster. They have all the recipe. Uh, they have all the ingredient, ingredients for a playoff recipe, Keith. I think all you need now is for Caleb Williams to start fast, gain that confidence within the offense, gain that confidence within himself. We know he's a confident young man altogether, but – you know you've been around these players. You've watched the natural growth of a quarterback like a Joe Burrow as he's learning that playbook and he's learning the ins and outs of that offense. Now I know it like the back of my hand, and I can make calls without the, the OC having to tell me what he's seeing. I'm seeing it already on my own. I'm looking forward to Caleb Williams getting that, just hitting the ground running. Because when you have Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Cole Komet, you know, DeAndre Swift, Roshan Johnson – I've Khalil Herbert in the backfield, right? They have so much weapons around them that Justin Fields didn't have, right? Then the quarterbacks probably before Justin Fields didn't have. I just think Caleb Williams needs to hit the ground running because everything is set up for him to just play ball and help this team win a very not not so much, not even have to win a very tough NFC North, but they can make the playoffs in an NFC that isn't that strong when we look at the AFC. Yeah, so I'm I'm with every point that you made. And DP, when it comes down to Caleb Williams, I have one name, two words. Shane Waldron, right, the offensive yeah. coordinator for the Chicago Bears. He's going to be so important for what they do offensively, right? And and it's for, it's for Shane, and, and we always talk about this. I say this on this podcast. It's for the offensive coordinator to – mold his offense around what he's been given right the truly good head coaches i've seen them be able to do that play to your players strength some of the things i've seen with the seattle seahawks and why geno smith took off was he made things simple so i'm, I'm expecting him to be able to do that for Caleb Williams. And I agree with you. I think a fast start is needed because it's going to be the morale of this team, right? And a fast start for Caleb Williams is, is it, he doesn't have the complete 
69 percent of his passes right you go in there you give me 64 65 as a rookie right in the first few weeks you know throw a couple of touchdowns but you manage the football you we we able to play good defense and it results in wins i am all for that right and and, and i think that's the fast start that they need because like you said the, the chicago bears can make some headway in this nfc and honestly the nfc north right with obviously the packers and the lions you feel great about but the vikings yeah. in the same spot y'all in right you look at the nfc east right not that doggone good, right? The NFC West, <laughs> NFC West is loaded. The NFC West, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's gonna be the problem. Uh, so <laughs> you have to figure out what the NFC South, and then the NFC South is God bless that situation, right? Yeah, uh, yeah who knows what the <laughs> NFC South is really going to be? But I, you said something that, that resonated with me. You said just go out there and manage games. And typically, when you see guys that are talented, like a Caleb Williams. It, you know he can do all the superhuman, the Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes stuff, but it's like, can I get you to just be Brock Purdy? And I, I don't want Andy Sanchez before not to take that in the wrong way. But knowing how to manage the game, right? Check in and out of runs. Like, hey, if it's not advantageous to this passing play, check out of it. Hand the ball off. Like, don't put yourself and, that was, and your team at risk. Yeah, and it's it's gonna be something to going back to the draft, right? And we did his draft profile. That was one of the first things I talked about, right? Is like Caleb just simply taking the layups and I like this yeah. offense from what I've seen in Seattle from Shane Waldron because they're built in layups into this offense, right? You don't always have to chuck it 50 yards down the field. When I was talking about managing the offense, I was not saying, oh, you just have to become the game manager, right? It's managing, hey, understanding down in distance, right? This is where I'm going to go with the football. I can take off and run and pick up an ex extra couple yards. When they had Justin Fields, DP, um, it, they, it, was, it was a bunch of silly mistakes, right? But with Caleb Williams, who he is as a prospect, and then you're talking about inserting him into the situation i think it can it can play for caleb to have a really good start and a really good i guess showing as a rookie because like you talked about they drafted well and then all the other offensive weapons that they acquired um are proven veterans and then he just has to kind of continue to elevate no shane waldron you know last year for seattle they were in they ran 70 percent of their offense was was in shotgun per sports info solution so you expect to see that for caleb williams they were in the mostly in 11 so that's what three wide receivers of running back in the tight end and that's kind of where caleb williams is comfortable as well so with these weapons they have with an offensive coordinator that's going to use the personnel packages that fits i like it keith let's jump to Jaden daniels does he need to like how important is it for him to get off to a, a fast start or could he kind of not like can he kind of take his time to get there could he take his time to get there dp this is a what have you done for me lately business there's no such thing as taking your time to get there um especially when you're talking about being with the washington commanders you're talking about one of the franchises that it, it they, they have a weird foundation right because there were there was a period of time where they were really good in football right and people respected the football the football acumen a lot of history right but then they've quickly been known for doing silly stuff right like it, it transitioned and so for an organization with that i don't think you have time they have to show that they pick the right pick right and, and it's, it's almost how do i how do i want to put this I, I i get the underline that commanders fans are excited about Jane daniels but they also still remember RG3 in the back of their head, right? And they're still wondering, like, man, are we going to mess this thing up? And so I think that's where it's at. But, DP, I want to jump all the way into this conversation, and we're about to bump against time. So this is what we're going to do, man. We're going to transition, but we're going to pick this Jane Daniels conversation back up. We're going to talk about what are the expectations for Jane Daniels as a rookie quarterback from when he was at LSU in his draft profile and then what to expect as, as far as what the commanders have put around him through the draft lens. So coming up next, man, we're talking Jane Daniels and those Washington commanders. This show is sponsored by Better Help. Guys, I know scrolling social media can be fun, but it also can be very detrimental. How many times do we find ourselves comparing our lives to others, right? Social media plays a part in that. Scrolling through Instagram, seeing the best pictures, the best videos, vacations, so forth and so on. And you think thinking someone's life looks better than yours. Comparison is a thief of joy. And it is easy to envy other people's lives. It might look like they have it all together on their Instagram, but in reality, they probably don't. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have. So you can start living your best life and become the best version 
of yourself. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Jaden Daniels, Keith, and, and you said you talked about the RG three situation. I'm not gonna lie; it, it is kind of res, it, it is it resembles it a little bit because remember RG three was drafted; he was the high pick. What did they do in the fourth round? They drafted Kirk Cousins. What did they do late in the draft? They drafted Sam Hartman, if I remember correctly. So I'm not saying that that's gonna happen again. We're gonna have deja vu over, but it is kind of res, they do resemble each other in terms of situations, and I do think that they're gonna have to find a balance on how they utilize a full skill set of Jaden Daniels, right? Yeah. How do they use yep. that passing and rushing ability that he brings? And also, like, explain to him, protect yourself so mm -hmm. you don't end up like RG3. Right. That's, that's huge for him, right? We're talking about Florida State week one last year. <laughs> this guy, you know, he he jumped, tried to jump over the pile, and it didn't turn out good for him. I, I'm, th I'm thinking about who Jaden was at LSU in the draft profile and how he, he almost had a career elevation, right? Like what he was in 2022 was not who he was in 2023. And it seemed that once again, the offensive coordinators at LSU molded some things around him. He got comfortable. So I'll be interested to see what does Cliff Kingsbury do to make him comfortable? I think Jaden is one of those quarterbacks. And I don't know if you, if you got this vibe, just even in the past, right? It seems like some guys, and it is this is the equivalent of basketball, right? Where they say you just got to see the ball go through the hoop. Um, some quarterbacks, especially dual threat guys, they get more comfortable with the game and they settle down when they're able to run the football and pick up positive yards and just get like a good play, right? And mm -hmm. you you have to get their confidence first because they're thinking, oh man, this is the NFL, you know, can't mess up this and this. It's like, nah, let me let me do what's easiest for you, let you run a rock. Get comfortable. There you go. And then now we're gonna build some some stuff out of outside of the pocket, out of structure type situations. And I'll be interested to see what Cliff does because I want to ask you when you compare Jaden Daniels to Kyler Murray. Totally, I, I know they're, they're different players, right? But their style of play was it similar? And because I'm what I want to do is I'm trying to project. We talking about as draft yeah. prospects, right? Was it somewhat similar as far as their ability to run around and make plays? And then you spent a lot of time covering the Cardinals. So I want to ask, like, do you see Cliff Kingsbury pulling and being able to mold Jane Daniels? Because did he – and I cause like, how do I want to ask this? Did he mold Kyler Murray? Was Kyler Murray yeah. just freestyling? Or did he call things for Kyler Murray? Um, a little bit of both. He he did call things for Kyler Murray. And, and they're, they're very similar in, in terms of prospects, guys who are – dynamic runners, guys who can create, uh, improvise, force missed tackles in the backfield, spin out of plays, and then chuck the ball down the field accurately, right? You know, um, of course, the arm talents are a little different where Kyler has more of a – he's more he's got a stronger arm where mm -hmm. I think Jaden throws – and I think Kyler throws a great touch too. Jaden throws with immense touch down the field, right? He knows how to rainbow the ball out in front of his guys, put the ball placement down the field and everything. And I think both – I think at the same same way, like they both were guys who didn't access the middle of the field as much as you'd want to. That was kind of the knocks them as passers and everything. They weren't like super comfortable with it as much coming out. But I do think that he like the way Cliff would call he would call those QB zone reads, QB counters outside off of kind of the RPO look. You know, what I mean, selling the run, got a guard pulling in. Now we get Kyler on the perimeter, and I think he's going to do this. He'll probably do the same type of things for Jaden Daniels. But also getting that run game going is that's going to be the big thing with him is like, all right, you didn't consistently do it. He did it at times with, for, for Kyler to give Kyler that traditional run game where it's like, hey, your legs aren't needed, right? Because that's when you really change the offense. When you do have a dual threat QB, but you can run it traditionally and you can run it with the quarterback involved, that's where it changes everything. Because now it's hard to really get a grasp on the run game because if I go under center, it's not as, oh, well, they're not going to run it with the quarterback. They're going to run it with the running back. Well, you know, play action boot. Now I am on the perimeter. No, actually, this is a naked boot, and I'm taking it outside. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it becomes a natural RPO run pass option of sorts. So I do think that Cliff uh, 
And luckily, he's the OC and not the head coach, so he's going to answer to somebody. <laughs> um, I don't think Dan Quinn's going to let him get away with not running the ball, but I do think he's going to be able to put – and that, I think that's going to be the big thing for Cliff, like just putting Jaden in the right situations. There were times where Kyler, I'm telling you, watching watching the games live and watching the tape, and you could tell when Kyler didn't like the play call because the the look that like when the camera zoomed in on his helmet, he just had this puzzled look on his face, like this is what you're calling in this situation. And he might look back to the sideline, and I think it was against the the Raiders the year I think he tore his ACL. They the Raiders that was the Josh McDaniels game. And Kyler looked, it was like late in that game, they needed a touchdown. And Cliff calls a play that Kyler absolutely did not like. And Kyler just said, nah, we're not running this. And he checked to something else, and it was a touchdown. And it was like, well, Cliff, you kind of got to eat that. You know what I mean? Yeah, just yeah. like you got to call the right play. So I think that he can mold uh, Jaden similar to, to how he used Kyler Murray. I think it's going to just look a little different um, because of the fact that he's got to be strategic because – Kyler got banged up under him as well. Yeah, I, I think what's going to happen with that transition of Kyler Murray, I mean, not Kyler Murray, but Jaden, da- what well, not Jaden Daniels, Dan Quinn, and Cliff Kingsbury, right? This is going to kind of be like the courtroom, right? Where Dan Quinn is going to hear what's coming over the headset. We call in this play. He's just going to have to say objection, right? <laughs> <laughs> objection overruled. I'm not doing that. We're not calling this play right now. That's what's going to have to happen, DP. Um, he's going to have to serve as the judge at the end of the day. Objection. Yes. We're not submitting objection. that, right? No, we're not doing that. We're, we are not submitting that. But I'm, I'm, ex- I'm honestly, DP, when you talk about the construction of the commanders and then I want to go back to, because this is a draft podcast, and we talk about the draft show, right, with, with the H, HBO Hard Knocks. And remember, the Giants brought Jaden Daniels in, and this is going to be a key element of what Jaden does, right? And I think they asked him just to draw his favorite play that he's going to run no matter mm-hmm. what, right? And, of course, if you watch Jaden Daniels as a draft prospect, you was not surprised to see a slot fade, slot right? Slot fade. <laughs> you was not surprised to see a slot fade with a stop by the number one, right? That that was – and then, you know, Brian Dayboy asked him, oh, if I get single high, what do you want to do? It's like, have you watched this guy's film? You know what he's going to do. He's throwing a oh, slot fade <laughs> all day long. Like, that 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 was the staple. Um, And so I look at that, DP, and I'm sitting there saying that, that you know, you talk about Jahan Dodds, you're talking about Terry McLaurin. I think they still have to let him – have the opportunity to create those big plays. So as much as we're talking about running a football, I think it, you have to give him a slot fade just so he, he's comfortable throwing the football, right? He feels good stepping into that thing. And I, I always thought this, that some quarterbacks are vertical throwers and they see the game vertically, right? When you talk about mm-hmm. draft prospects, and then some quarterbacks can throw with the anticipation and they see it horizontally, right? That's all your crossing routes, your dagger concepts, things like that. Jaden is a guy that's much more comfortable pushing the ball vertical up the field, and you have to give him them vertical options. And guess what? You have the wide receivers, right? You have, um, you know, they drafted, I'm about to say Christian McCaffrey, Luke McCaffrey, another Mm -hmm. 6'1 wide receiver, but having Terry McLaurin, having Jahan Dotson, being able to unleash him, I think will play really good for Jaden Daniels. But DP, we still have to talk about Bo Nix, man. We got to talk about Bo Nix. We have to talk about our guy, Drake May. So coming up next, Mm -hmm. man, we're running through all of these quarterbacks. Coming up next, we're going to talk about Drake May, and then wrap up with Mr. Bo Nix down there in Denver. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And guys, as the summer winds down, as we get closer to school, right? Parents, fathers, take the family out to your local MLB ballpark and have a great time, all right? Take the kids, take the wife, take some friends, whoever, just to go and enjoy it. And game time can help you enjoy it. Why? Because they're able to take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Drake May, Keith. Drake May has time, but how much time does Drake May have? He's not really. Most people don't even feel like he's projected to be the starter. This year, because you have Jacoby, Jacoby. being there, but coming into training camp, 
as a rookie this week. I think they, I think they arrived on Friday. So him getting in there, getting that 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 first early work with the young guys in training camp, a, a fast start for him. Would that do you think that accelerates his chance to get on the field sooner during the season? Or do you think that the that Gerard Mayo and Alex Van Pelt they stick to their plan on and yeah, we might wait to after week 10, depending on where we are, to assess when we're gonna put you out there? I, I so I, I think no matter what, they should wait with Drake May. I think no matter what, they should wait on him. Um, because we we talked about this and we see we can't get excited about the hope of the quarterback and then forget the rest of the team, right? And and that's what we're gonna do as NFL fans. We're gonna see Drake May throw one touchdown. And if he can throw one, that means he can throw 50, right? And then he needs to be our starter. And guess what? He'll be ready to rock and the New England Patriots will be ready for the Super Bowl in two years. I think we have to dial back expectations and dial back how that looks, right? I, I think that it should be Jacoby Brissett. I think that we talk about the draft lens, right? They have to make up for so much of what they've missed in the draft over the past few years. And we're talking about Drake May, the prospect. I look at it, DP, and I say, and I say that I like Drake May a lot, right? I liked him enough to wonder if he should be the second quarterback taken. I think mm -hmm. what separated Drake May and Jaden Daniels was Jaden Daniels' running ability. And I think that's what, you know, the highlight plays, the splash plays, things like that. But throwing the football, if you ask me, I just had to put him in the lens and two guys just sitting back throwing the football with removing all ability of mobility, right? I think you probably get very similar results in a sense. So I think Drake May is a, is a talented quarterback. I don't rush him, right? I allow him to sit there and learn, and I'm always for letting guys learn, right? Like allow them to observe, understand how a real NFL week goes, right? There's no reason to rush him as a rookie and make him the starter because you have a guy like Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett is going to drop nuggets for him during the season that won't even be intentional, right? You just see how things unfold between the OC, the quarterback, like you get to understand the situation. So if if I if I have Drake May, if I'm the New England Patriots, I'm sitting them, highly talented draft prospect, and that's why I'm sitting them because I don't even want to get it wrong or mess him up. I'm going to wait till my team is a lot more talented. Maybe I put him out there week 12, week 13 to this receiver core. <laughs> shows me who's good and who's not, DP, but I'm not putting him out there with a bad situation. Yeah, they're, they're, right now their current bye week is week 14, and they, they come off of that bye week with two away games against Arizona and Buffalo, and then two games at home hosting the Chargers um, the end of December, and then the last week, week 18, they host Buffalo. Um, you know, the, the Josh Allen them come to New England. So I, I, I could see them waiting till after week 14 to – because typically when you start – when you don't start a rookie quarterback – the beginning of the season, you try to get to that bye week so he gets two weeks of preparation for the next opponent. So you're like, okay, if we're going into a hostile situation, we're going on the road, we can prepare you for what to expect from an NFL to be a starter and on the, on the road in the NFL. That's just a tough start in any way, right? To, to your first game is on the road. That's difficult, especially once teams are 15 weeks into the season. They know who they are. They know how they're playing. And yep. you're just getting your you – know, you're getting your first – NFL action. I do think that they need to stick with their game plan. If it's going to be, hey, wait to week four, uh, wait to the bye week to make the change, wait for it, right? I think he would have to play stellar in camp and preseason to say, all right, maybe, right? Could could this be a could this be an Anthony Richardson situation where we all most people said, listen, you might want to sit Anthony Richardson, give him some time, let who Gardner Minshew or whoever go out there and start the first couple games. And then you you see Anthony Richardson in the preseason, like, hey, we got we, we got something here. All right, we, we I like what I see. And then you get to then you get through practice and like, you know what? All right, man, I we can't really keep him off the field. He's our he's our best option at quarterback. You know what I mean? Things of that nature. But these two teams, the Colts are trying to contend right away, and I think the I think the Patriots are too. I think the Patriots are trying to contend as well, and I think they have the roster in most parts to contend, but like you said, the receivers, Javon Baker, um, Jalen Polk, no Jalen Polk. And then, uh, the Mario Douglas. Douglas. Yeah. yeah, yep. Pop Douglas, you know, forgetting about, you know, not forgetting about him in the slot. And of course, Hunter Henry, Ramondre Stevenson, Juju. who they just paid Juju. Yeah. Juju. I forgot about Juju being there. So they have some weapons. Now it's about who's going to emerge 
as that guy. And also these young guys, hey, this is the opportunity for Javon Baker and Jalen Polk to say, listen, even if you do want to go out there and get T. Higgins in the offseason, just know you got some young ballers in your in your locker room already. You know what yeah, I mean? I to where say- it kind of opens that up. Yep, if you're talking about the draft of cut, what that was two years ago when they drafted Kayshawn Boutte, right? Hopefully, yeah. you can get even if you don't get first round Kayshawn, right? When he was at the peak, and this is how I always felt like Kayshawn. I felt like Kayshawn was a late second, early third round skill set. And if you can get that when you drafted that in the sixth, what I think sixth, seventh sixth round, round fifth, six, maybe seven fifth round. round, something like that. I know it was back in of day three. If you can get that out of this wide receiver core, I think that's then you're in a good spot. So I, I agree, DP. You're talking about Drake made a prospect. I, I like Drake me. I, I think he, he's a he's a baller, right? He's what you typically can ask for with the NFL draft prospect, right? A guy that's that's highly experienced. He has mobility, good arm, has made some difficult throws, right? I, I think he's he's about the yeah. the baseline for what you can ask for your prototypical first round quarterback right like you see you see something super special that we've never seen before no but he is a good football player i think where we 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 probably fall in line the most is is the the wide receiver core right and, and this is yeah. the new england patriots draft situation so i'm all about that because we just named what maybe one two three four five six Probably they have probably eight possibles, right? Talk about yeah. all the wide receivers that they have. They have literally eight guys who have a name, and seven of them haven't did anything in the NFL yet. So you have to figure out who's going to arise to the occasion and be your starting. If you go eleven personnel, who's going to be your starting three wide receivers, right? Who are going to be the most dependable guys to show up and show out? And I think once you have that DP, then now you have a situation where Drake May can step in and he can perform better. And but also you know this, and and this is where you get tricky, is because sometimes if, when you have two unproven things, when something goes wrong, you don't know what part to identify. You get what I'm saying? And you you want to put him in a situation that's like, hey, and we talked about this with how the Dolphins approached with Tua, right, and some of these other quarterbacks is that we gave you all the weapons. So that way we know when this doesn't work out, it was a you thing, right? But when there's question marks on both sides, when y'all play bad offensively, y'all don't know where to start, right? It's like, oh, no, shoot, no. this wide receiver in the wrong route. Maybe that's why the quarterback was inaccurate. The quarterback missed his blitz. The offensive right. line wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even know where to start <laughs> when you're talking about evaluating the New England Patriots. Yeah, they're a team that's, you know, just we, we got to see them hit the field, right? We got to see yeah. them hit the field, uh, see what they, what, what they do. You know, they still got a lot of veteran players who can make plays. Christian Gonzalez is coming back. You know, our favorite corner from the 2023 NFL draft, he's healthy. Alex Austin, one of my guys, uh, he's back, you know, in that secondary. Kyle Duggar, they, they, they have players, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Christian Barrymore, like Jawan Bentley, I think is still there at linebacker. They, they have – a good defense, offensive line is coming together. They can run the ball. Now it's all about, like I said, figuring out those young wide receivers for Drake May. And I think with Drake May, I mean, you got to get him. If you can get him the right weapons, we might be able to see Justin Herbert out of Drake May. But until then, he's going to be Drake May until we find out what we got right. We are, <laughs> I'm not going to do that Justin Herbert stuff like everybody else, but I'm excited to see what he can do. And I think if he does get off to a fast start, good. I don't think it puts any pressure on the coaching staff, or it shouldn't. Even though the fans are going to be clamoring for their third overall pick, we know how the fans can get in games, Keith. You know, they want Drake May. You're going to start hearing chants of Drake May if the team is losing at halftime against the Buffalo Bills early in the season, right, or the Miami Dolphins. They're going, we're going to hear those chants. But even with hearing those chants, stay, keep your feet down to the ground. Like, listen, we're going to stay 10 toes down and stick to our plan. Because if your plan is to get him mentally ready – and he's mentally ready by week 14, and you get that four or five game stretch of good Drake May that gives you that confidence going into the offseason. It's your job, it's your team, it's your offense. Let's build this thing around you and let's take it to the next level. Let's get back to winning, being a playoff New England Patriots team and not a team that's drafting the top five. They're not accustomed to that. That's not their culture, and they don't want to get used to that either. No, nah, I agree 100% with DP. We talking quarterback, man. There was a lot of quarterbacks drafted. And this is what we're going to do, man. We got to give our guy, Bo Nix, yeah, the proper 
respect, right? So this is what we're going to do. Tomorrow we are coming back with more quarterbacks, right? We're going to talk Bo Nix. We're going to talk a little Spencer Rattler, right? And there was a record. We're going to talk a little J.J. McCarthy if we have to, and I think we will. I like talking J.J. Yeah. DP. I was just down in Minnesota, bumped into Mr. J.J. McCarthy. So we're going to have a fun conversation, talk about that. So listen, man, that wraps up today's show over here at the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I want to say shout out to our everyday is thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day, man. If you could hit my voice, hit that like button don't forget to comment and make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel at locked on nfl draft i am keith sanchez you can find me on x at the talent code that right there is my guy we go back and forth every single day man mr damian parson you can find him on x at dp underscore nfl and like we always like to say man y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everyday. As Keith said, tomorrow, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, Spencer Rattler. We're talking more rookie quarterbacks heading into the 2024 NFL training camp. So come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.